We're going to continue in this section of solving problems using rates and interpreting rates. Uh, we're just going to start with an example and talk about it. It says the fuel efficiency of vehicles in Canada uses the rate of liters per 100 kilometers. The owner's manual of Mario's car claims the fuel efficiency is 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers <clears throat> on the highway. Before Mario's first big highway trip, he set his trip meter to zero so he could keep track of his total distance he drove. He started with his gas tank full. Each time he stopped to fill up the tank, he recorded the distance he had driven and the amount of gas he had purchased. So when he filled up the first time, <clears throat> he drove 645 kilometers and he had purchased 48 liters. I'm going to do this entire one in green. And the next time on fill up two, his odometer now said 1,037 kilometers and he had to purchase 32.1 liters. So on leg number one, and the question says, on which leg of Mario's trip was his fuel efficiency the best? So let's look at leg one. And what we're looking for is eventually to have liters per 100 kilometers. So that's the goal. It's always good with these problems to have the goal in mind. Uh, at this point, so since we need liters per 100 kilometers, we're going to do liters per kilometers. So in leg number one, he purchased 48 liters in order to travel 645 kilometers. Now, one thing that's always useful, as I've mentioned before, is to use unit rates in order to solve problems. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, we're going to figure out how many liters it takes to travel one kilometer. Uh, there are many other ways you could do this, but if I divide by 645, that's going to tell me how many liters it takes for one kilometer. And this is often quite useful. So I'm going to do 48 liters divided by 645 kilometers. That's going to get me 0 0.074. So, uh, for Mr. Mario, it takes him 0.074 liters to travel one kilometer. And if we want to know how, man, how many uh, liters it takes for 100 kilometers, we could just times the entire thing by 100. So if I, div if I times that by 100, I will have 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, leg number two is slightly more difficult, uh, because in leg number two, we know that it took him a total of 32.1 liters. But the distance was not 1,037. The distance, that's his odometer, uh, is the distance he traveled since the previous fill-up. So if his odometer now said 1,037, and in the last fill-up it said 645, the distance is going to be 1,037 minus 645 kilometers. So the first thing to understand is it took him 32.1 liters in order to travel 392 kilometers. Okay, uh, now we could solve this the exact same way. In order to compare rates, we have to have similar units as well as have the numerical value in the second unit be the same. So if, in order to find a unit rate, if I divide by 392, so 32.1 divided by 392 gets me 0.082, I will make it. So 0.082 liters per one kilometer. And if I want to know how many liters it's per 100 kilometers, I could just times that by 100. So it would be 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers. So the last thing to do is interpret the answer. It says, on which leg of Mario's trip was his fuel efficiency the best? Would you rather use 7.4 liters of gas for 100 kilometers or 8.2? So the better one is always the one that uses less gas for 100 kilometers. So trip number one or leg number two, one uh, was better. I will do one more question. Uh, sometimes rates can be applied to graphs or have some visual understanding behind them, so that's this particular scenario. Uh, the question says, determine the unit rate of each line segment in kilometers per hour, then describe a scenario that could be represented by this graph. So we're going to look at the first part first. There's four different segments here. What you're noticing on this graph is that the horizontal axis is time, the vertical axis is distance in kilometers. And what we would like, so let's look at A. For line segment A, uh, the time was a total of from 0 to 30. So that time was 30 minutes. And the distance here was from 0 kilometers to 2 kilometers, so 2 kilometers. Okay. Now the goal, let's just look at line segment A. Uh, the goal here is we would like kilometers per hour. And what we know right now is we've traveled 2 kilometers in 30 minutes. 
So proportionally, we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. We could just times this by 2, and you would have 4 kilometers in 60 minutes, which is exactly the same as 4 kilometers per hour. Okay, line segment B is a straight horizontal line, and what that means is that in 10 minutes, uh, so let me do this in green here, this distance here is 10 minutes, so it's 10 minutes, but he traveled no kilometers, so uh, he traveled no kilometers in 10 minutes. And how fast is that as a rate? Uh, that's, well, that's no kilometers per hour. Okay, uh, line segment C, which we will do in red. Line segment C, uh, the time is from 40 minutes all the way until 60 minutes, so the time is 20 minutes. And the distance here is from, if you look here, it's from two up until five kilometers. So that's three kilometers. So that would be three kilometers in 20 minutes. And since we need per hour, we would times this by three in order to get the time up to 60 minutes. So that would be nine kilometers in 60 minutes, or in other words, nine kilometers per hour. Okay, and the final scenario, which we'll do in yellow, and orange. Uh, it's a steep line, so you could assume that he's going pretty quickly. Uh, in this case, the time is from 60 minutes to 65 minutes, so that's just five minutes long. And the distance is from five kilometers all the way back down to zero. So the distance is five kilometers. So he went five kilometers in five minutes. <clears throat> so five kilometers in five minutes. Proportionally, you could multiply that by 12, and you would have 60 kilometers in 60 minutes, or in other words, 60 kilometers per hour. I should say 60. Uh, 60 kilometers per hour. Okay? Uh, the last part is to read the question and see if we've finished it. Determine the unit rate of each line segment in kilometers per hour. We've done that. Then describe a scenario that could represent, be represented by this graph. So the scenario could be uh, 4 kilometers per hour is approximately a walk, 0 kilometers per hour is a stop. 9 kilometers an hour could be a jog, and 60 kilometers per hour is a drive. So this scenario could describe someone who walked, then stopped, then jogged, then drove home. Uh, so the last part of this is the key ideas. So part C, the key ideas. Uh, the key ideas for this particular section are as follows. <clears throat> First of all, in a graph that shows a rate, what we would do is the vertical axis always represents the first unit. So in this previous example, the first unit was kilometers. So we did kilometers per hour, or kilometers in an amount of time. So the vertical axis is the first rate. The horizontal unit represents the second, or horizontal axis, sorry, represents the second unit. And finally, in a graph, <clears throat> the slope of a segment, rise over run, represents a rate. And this can be used to determine a unit rate, which is useful for comparing, which is what we did in the last one. We found out how fast he was going per one kilometer. Uh, if you're in my class, you may move on to this formative question here, uh, and we'll move on to the next section.